Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Currency Call presented by Forex Trading Asia, featuring the LCMS traders. And a good welcome as well to everyone watching the call live, too. And if you are watching this on YouTube, the delayed telecast, make sure you visit the Jindal Thai website and get involved in the LCMS Traders Club. There was a lot going on last night as well. They had the, the team had the Tuesday night evening call, too. So a lot was, was shared, and it's just helpful to stay on top of the markets and be involved with active traders that can really help guide you through the learning process as well as presenting some trade ideas. Now, we've got a little bit going on as well today. We have the pound in focus and the euro pound as well with Jin. We've got Gim Hong here going through the FOMC meeting minutes coming out at 3 a.m. GMT plus eight on Thursday. And I obviously will go through the DXY too. But before we get into everything today for Wednesday, the 16th of February, I'll just go through the risk disclaimer. So we are sharing trade ideas and it's important to understand that any information shared in this video is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of the speakers. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades. So to get us kicked off today, with today's episode, we've got Gim Hong here, just going through the FOMC meeting minutes as a bit of a preview. So over to you now, Gimmy. Okay, thanks, Scott. Well, um, actually the FOMC meeting minutes will unlikely provide us with any new um, surprises, okay? So yes, you will be released tomorrow at 0300 GMT plus eight, okay? Um, actually, to be honest, yeah, there, there's nothing, you know, nothing more that they can surprise us with okay the recent during the recent meeting all right they well, carry on with the tapering and they have already confirmed that uh, the tapering will end in march okay hence bond buying will end in march all right after which they will enter the reinvestment phase of the um, bond holdings okay and um, another thing is that in terms of interest rates okay jerome powell um, said during his press conference that for the remaining seven meetings, okay, in 2022, seven monetary policy meetings in 2022, um, you guys can actually, well, the public can actually expect um, interest rates hikes coming in from the FOMC, from the central bank itself, okay? Of course, this all will, you know, subject to how the economic recovery and inflation turns out to be, but um, what, he's, what, he was, what he said was, like, you know, it's actually fair game to, you know, for the central bank to carry out interest rates high um, on a on a on a on a almost monthly basis, okay, almost monthly basis. Um, other than that, let me see. Um, yeah, other than that, you know, during the last meeting, the central bank actually highlighted that our inflation is definitely well above the two percent target. Okay, now the most important issue is to bring it back down, um, so that it can be sustained. Okay, in the longer long in the long run okay within the two to three percent um inflation target okay and yeah other than that press conference balance sheet no mentioning yeah oh yeah and one more thing is the unloading of bonds okay so the last time round when they met um they actually published a, a short statement on I think some some minor structure of how uh, the unloading of bonds uh, will be carried out. Okay, it's like actually like a standard operation pro procedure. I would say it's like an SOP kind of thing. All right, so they usually release this shortly before um, they actually start to unload bonds or to sell back the bonds into the market. Okay, but um, as of last meeting, not much details were being um, were being shared. Okay, in terms of bonds are uh, unloading and things like that okay but um during the next meeting they may actually uh, cover more in terms of this issue okay but nonetheless uh although we are not expecting any new 
surprises coming from the FOMC minutes, all right, we can actually, well, I will definitely look into the minutes to see if there's any more details, more specifics, okay? Specific, well, there can always be more details being provided. I mean, given that, you know, the FOMC currently being lead by... Uh, Jerome Paul is at many times it's a bit unclear, okay, and a bit uh, vague, okay, in terms of their plans, all right. I mean, yeah, QE to end in March, that's something clear, but still, we want to know how, um, you know, in terms of words, okay, words wise, how hawkish, how aggressive the Federal Reserve Committee members are in terms of rate hikes, okay? You know, just like how the um, one of the members, James Bullard, has just spoken recently that uh, he's actually hoping, okay, that interest rate hike will be like, uh, okay, there'll be like some 1% interest rate hike by 1st of July, okay? And given that there's only three meetings from now until 1st of July, that means, okay, we can actually expect one of the meetings to be uh, to be a 0.5% rate hike meeting, all right? Probably going to be March. This is my take, all right? But um, yeah, we we'll still have to, you know, wait for more details and see how the whole thing unfolds uh, before we can, you know, have a clear review, all right? So this is what I'm actually looking for, okay? More details on individual members, um, you know, view on how hawkish they can get in terms of um, carrying out interest rates hikes, all right? Then other than that, yeah, I think I'm not expecting any surprises coming in from the FOMC meeting minutes, all right? So it may very well be an uneventful release, I would say, okay? But nonetheless, you know, I'm actually, to be honest, I'm really hoping that, that they will surprise us with something new, all right? But it's just that right now, I just cannot figure out, you know, what other things can they talk about all right so any questions on the meeting minutes okay no questions all right if there's no questions um well, in case they actually come up with new stuff or you know more details on um, interest rates hikes and things like that has been provided okay during the release on the meeting minutes i will update you guys again tomorrow during our currency call okay so with that i will hand it over to scott for his dxy analysis over to you scott all right thanks Kimmy. and so we we did see a little bit happening in the us uh last night we also had some chatter that russia did pull back some troops from the ukrainian border but again a lot of that is quite noisy around the specific details and it's still a little bit of an ongoing situation but we did see the US dollar pull back on the daily here. Uh, we dipped back below uh, 96, and I'll bring up the one hour just to give some perspective. So we were pretty flat, honestly, and we're just holding around here. We did have some news out last night, but really when it came out, it, it did move it a little bit. As you can see, we got to around 96. We didn't actually even clear the recent highs of 96.40 but very much market is happy to hover around the 96 flat support level. Another thing to take note of, just with the risk sentiment as well, this was the NASDAQ uh, and had a nice little rally as well, just after some recent selling we've seen. So a lot of you know, money was, was happy to sort of move around back into high risk uh, assets. So we'll just see how things hold up with what is going on in regards to news that is coming up, especially with the FOMC uh, meeting minutes that were discussed, but just a little bit of a summary of what we did see with the news and why we did see a little bit of a lift on the US dollar, but it, it did flatten out again. Uh, we did have the PPI and the core PPI month on month, both beating expectations. So we had 1% for the PPI month on month, that was double what was expected. And as you can see, it was 0.2% last month. And then we had 0.8% uh, for the core PPI. 0.5 was expected. And a little, little interesting with the uh, Empire State Manufacturing Index, that was down quite a bit. But really, the, uh, the PPI figure did sort of help send the US dollar a little higher, but it's just basing around 96 now. And we, we do have for later today, we've got... The CAD CPI is going to be interesting to see. We do have the retail sales coming out as well. So 
could be an opportunity to play a short term long on the US dollar as it holds around here. Ideally, it comes sort of back down closer to 96, but we are, we're pretty much there. So that would be nice if we do see a beat. We've got 1% expected and 2.1 expected on the retail sales. So there's something to pay attention to. That's 9.30 tonight, GMT plus A. And then like you mentioned, we do have those FOMC meeting minutes. And then for Thursday, we've got a little bit of news coming out for building permits. And But frankly, that the direction that we see from the meeting minutes is gonna be quite interesting and something to pay attention to as well. So stay tuned for an update on how that all goes in tomorrow's call as well. But those are my thoughts there guys on the US dollar index. Now we do have the pound in focus today with with gin, with the pound US dollar, I've also got a bit of an update on the euro pound as well. So I'll hand it over to you now, Jin. Thanks for that, Scotty. So um, with the pound dollar in focus, we do have some news to be released today for the, from the UK. So just sharing with you here the news for today at 3 p.m. GMT plus eight, we do have the CPI numbers year on year was a 5.4, expected 5.4. But if I look into the historical, what, you, what we would have seen is that since, since way back, right? Since way back, um, September 2%, expected 2.9, came out 3.2. October 3.2, expected dropped a little bit. Um, November 3.1, 3.9, 4 4.2. December 4.2, 4.8, 5.1. And in as recently as January was 5.1, 5.2, and now a 5.4. So what we've seen with the UK as well is that inflation seems to be, CPI is an inflationary number, inflation seems to be um, not running out of control, but in the high side, it's trending towards the higher side. So I think that in this scenario, at 3 p.m., we might actually see even a 5.6 on the CPI number year on year. What this means is that if we do see the inflationary number trend towards that 5.6 or towards that 6% number, this could actually spur the Bank of England towards um, further rate hikes as I think if I scroll down, um, there was an article somewhere there that said, that inflation could push, I can't find it now, but that said inflation could push um, further rate hikes from the UK. So that's something to pay attention to, even if it does drop to a five point, unlikely there'd be a 5.1. If it does do a 5.2, we could still see that as a um, trigger towards the Bank of England increasing, looking to increase rates further. So with that possibility of the bank of, of inflation being a bit high, Bank of England looking to increase rates. What that all could mean is that looking at the pound dollar on the H4 time frame, I've just added in this line of 1.3520. Why this line is as recently as the 26th of Jan, we saw it hit this point, turn down. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, we saw it bounce off this point. And over the last couple of days, we saw it struggle, struggle to break below this 1.3520 level. So what this means is that if we do see the CPI number come out 5.2 to 5.6%, we could see further upside to the pound dollar. So just to show you what it looks like, we could see that further upside, you could be looking at a 30, 40 pip stop loss for a good 60, 70 pip take profit level. You're looking at a one is to two, almost a one is to two risk reward ratio towards the upside with the news to be released, given that we see a good, in, good CPI number. Good CPI number, Bank of England looking to increase rates could push the pound dollar higher. So bear in mind, this is going to be possibly slightly short term, short term, because 
Coming back to the news at 9.30 GMT plus 8, we do have the US retail sales number month on month looking to go from a minus 1.9% to a 2.1. Core retail sales looking to go from a minus 2.3 to a 1%. If we do see that number being released as forecasted, then we're going to see that dollar strength come back into play. So with that, you know, short term towards upside, dollar strength coming back down, we might see it react towards this 1.3630 level, turning back down, same as what it did back in mid of Feb, 20, uh, 10th of Feb, and also back on the 3rd of Feb, hit that level and turn back down. That's what I would be looking for. In the event that the pound dollar does not go straight up, it does turn back down and look to bounce up then you have that opportunity to have a bit of an earlier entry, a bit of a better entry. I think that buying opportunities, you could be looking for it to bounce off this level and turn back up. You could be looking to buy above 1.3540, above 1.3540, 30, 40 pip stop loss, 60, 70 pip take profit level. Again, that one is to two risk reward ratio. With that said about the euro pound, uh, about the pound dollar, looking at the euro pound, if the pound dollar does shoot up, if the pound dollar does shoot up, similar to what we looked at last week um, on the 10th, I'm looking for it to react and how it's reacting to this 84 level. This last two candles reacting to the 84 level, looking for it to turn back down. I would say that as an update to the recent yesterday's euro pound analysis i say that you could be looking to sell the euro pound towards a downside again a 20 30 pip stop loss initial take profit could be one is to one for the 25 pip one is to one risk reward ratio or you could drag it down to about a 50 pip one to two risk reward ratio towards the downside given that we see the pound dollar move towards the upside what happens is that you also need to pay attention to the euro dollar as we look at the euro pound. Euro dollar, as we were analyzing, looking for it to move towards a downside, we saw that it had to close below this 1.1350 level to move towards a downside. Has taken a while, I'll drag that out. Has taken a while, it's happening now. It hasn't closed below at those two points looks like it's going to close below this point. So if the euro dollar does come down together with the pound dollar pushing towards the upside, the euro pound could be a trade that would be quite high on the priority list. Um, again, just touching back on the dollar index like Scott was just sharing with you, it is sitting at that 96 level. When we spoke about it last night with the Traders Club members during our session in the evening, we were expecting it to bounce off or to break through that 96 level towards that 96.50. At this point, well, what happened was it sat below that level, still looking like it might turn back up towards that 96.50, looking for that dollar strength coming into play later into the night or possibly even later into the week. With all that, I think there are a couple of trading opportunities that we've been sharing with you already on the dollar on the Aussie dollar, the Kiwi dollar, the Euro, now on the pound and also the Euro pound. I think that there are several other opportunities on the US yen especially. Uh, we do have CAD news to be released today and later into the week. So pay attention to all that. Many trading opportunities to be had for this week. But with all the uncertainty, I think this was a mantra that we've been sharing throughout the week or throughout the past couple of weeks. With all the geopolitical uncertainties, keep your trades short term. Uh, there is going to be a lot of spikes um, with news or rumors of tr troops being pushed towards the line or taken away from the line. Those are going to influence prices very significantly. With that said, I'll pass it back to you, Scotty. All right. Thanks, Jen. And no questions so far. And just remember, if you do have any questions after the call, we are available in the LCMS Traders Club group too. So I hope 
everyone is enjoying the week so far and you're, you're having some good trades and we are here to help out if you've got any queries of, as well of any trade ideas you might see. And thanks so much everyone for watching. Hope to see everybody tomorrow for the yen analysis and gold and hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Bye, bye for now everyone.